The following presentation is brought to you by the Realm Network. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to a new edition of Vixens Who Rule. Uh, we're going to take the show in a little different direction tonight. I've I've kind of been, you know, going through Twitter uh, the last week or so. I've kind of been listening to various members of the brand, and I'm noticing that there's a lot of good, strong female talent uh, out on the indie scene right now. And and I thought, you know what? We'd use Vixens Who Rule as kind of like a stomping grounds. Let's pass some of these strong females through at a very early age before they've made it to the uh, big time, before they made it to diva or a knockout status. Let's run them by Vince Russo first. Vince will take a look. Vince will do an interview. Vince will see what's there. And then, as you could see by my title, I'm a scout of talent. Uh, I'll let them know what I think. I'll listen to what the brand has to say. We'll, we'll see what they have to say. And then basically we'll take it from there. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to open it up tonight with a hometown girl, uh, you know, from New Jersey. Everybody knows I'm a Long Island boy. This is a <laughs> Jersey girl. Uh, this girl has gotten a little taste of the big time. I know she did a match, uh, you know, on TNA, the uh, one night only with, with the uh, knockouts. I know she worked a match there. I know she's been used as an extra numerous times on the WWE. We're going to talk about that a little bit, too. And I'm talking about a newcomer to this business <laughs> that I'd like to welcome to the show. I'm talking about Diana Porrazo. Diana, are you there? Yes, I am. Hi. How are you doing, Deanna? I'm good. How are you? All right. Deanna, first of all, a couple of things. I got to tell you, I love that name. Very, Thank you so much. Yeah, very unique name, Deanna. Now, is that your birth name? Yes, it is. Is, is there meaning behind that? Was a relative name, Deanna? Because that's a, that's a very unique name. Yeah. Um, no, my dad actually, um, my mom had, I have a twin brother. So when we were both born, um, they were going through names. They wanted us to have the same initials. Um, so my brother's name is Dominic, and that um, was something my parents always wanted to name their boy. So they had to find something with a D, and they were going Donna, Dina, Deanna. Uh, and then my dad was just like, Deanna. And then he's like, no, 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 I mean Donna, something, something. And my mom was like, nope, that's it. I want Deanna. That's what it is. So. That's a great <laughs> name, very unique name. I feel sorry for your twin brother, Dominic, because, oh. Deanna, I want to say it looks like you got all the looks in the family. Oh, thank you. So, you know, I, I want to apologize to Dominic. That's the way the ball bounces. Now, let me ask you this. This is another question. I'm, I'm keeping my fingers crossed. I look at Perazzo, so we know dad's Italian, but I'm asking the question, are we 100% Italian? Yes, I am. <laughs> What what is your mom's maiden name? Um, D. Alessandro. Wow, we're about as Italian as we <laughs> get in that household, huh? Yeah, yeah. That's what, listen, there's to me, Diana, <laughs> a full blooded Italian from Jersey. It doesn't get any better than that for me. I'll tell you right now. What are you gonna do? Yeah, I know. It's a, I love it so. Now, now, Deanna, I, I literally, this, this is an absolute shoot. I kind of poll the people, uh, you okay. know, and I, I asked a lot of the uh, fans on, on, you know, my Twitter account, you know, who are some of the most popular indie girls uh, out there on the scene right now? And your name was at the top of that list. Oh, thank you. That means well, a lot to me. It really does. Well, you, know, you must be doing something <laughs> right. Uh, but, but I have to, first of all, I, I got to tell you something. Listen. Deanna, between you and me, I, let, let, let me let me give you the guidelines of the show just so you know. I okay. usually I, I let everybody know this before the show starts. Um, I've been called uh, the Oprah of podcasts. Okay. Uh, I've made people cry on this show. You know, I'm that type of an interviewer. I want you to know up front. But I want you to know, listen, Deanna, I've only been uh, I've only been blown off two times in a year on this show. And Deanna, I've had some big stars. You know, yeah, Kurt, no, I know. Yeah, Kurt Angle did the show. China <laughs> did the show. Some big stars. I only, he. this is what's ironic. I've been blown off two times. 
Both of the people uh, were from New Jersey. <laughs> and not only that, but now it comes to find that not the first one was your trainer, Robbie E. And now you today, you missed our appointment. <laughs> Deanna, you know, yeah, little something to come. Now, I hope, I so hope, funny. I hope the Robbie E isn't, isn't rubbing off on you. Um, maybe a little bit. No, I mean, <laughs> I got tied up at work. I apologize. I am so sorry. Um, but now that I know it's Rob, I don't feel as bad. That's it. You and Rob. You, that, that's <laughs> it. Nobody else. But, you know, Deanna, I think it's fascinating, and I'll tell you why. Listen, I've got, you know, I've, I've got kids. They're not even your age anymore. They're, they're older. My daughter's going to be 20, but okay. uh, my two sons are 25 and 28. This is what I love about you. You sent me a very short bio, okay? Here's the one thing that jumped out at me immediately. My middle son, his name is VJ. Okay. Deanna, he's 25 years old and still doesn't know what he wants to do with his life. <laughs> I look at you and I see how, you know, you don't have all your eggs in one basket. Yeah. You at 20 years old, you've got so much going, and I love that. You are correct me if I'm wrong now. Right now, you were late today because you're a preschool teacher, correct? Yes. Okay. Yeah. In conjunction with that, you're going to college, and I mm -hmm. think you're studying physical education science. Yes. Um, I'm I'm kind of like a dual major, so um, I'm an exercise science. Uh, major, but then I'm also getting a teaching certificate for physical education. So um, if I wanted to, I could teach kindergarten through 12th grade. And then I'm also getting a personal training certificate um, at the end of September. Okay. And, okay. And what, what, what year are you in now in college? Oh, <laughs> it's taken me a while, but um, this is my third year. So I'm just at a county college right now, um, County College of Morris. Um, it's one of the top county colleges in uh, the world, really. So um, it's taken me a little bit longer than most people stay at county, but again, my eggs are scattered everywhere. Everywhere, so. everywhere. And so, 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 so preschool teacher by day, maybe in the evening we're getting this college degree, and yeah. then by night, professional wrestler, all, mm -hmm. all by the age of 20 years old. Yeah. It's hectic. <laughs> it's hectic. Crazy. You know, you you know what you you know what our, our fellow Paisan Frank Sinatra would say about you, Diana. What you got the world on a string? Yeah, I do. <laughs> Unbelievable! I, do. I love that about you. I love you. you. Got so much going on. You're creating so many opportunities for you. But let let let's now let me go back a little about the beginning because I don't know much about you. I need to have a good grasp. Uh, on you so I can conduct the interview. And listen, I hate to say this, you know, Deanna, because this is so like stereotypical. It really is. And it's horrible. But first and foremost, let me tell you, I love women's wrestling. I've okay. always been a huge fan of it. Always big time. I'm a big supporter. I think the uh, wrestling business has a, um, ha you know, has a tendency to be sexist, and I don't mm -hmm. like that. I've always been outspoken about it. But the one thing that always comes to mind is I am so fascinated by women who make the decision to become professional wrestlers. So the first thing in my mind, you know, as uh, st stereotypical as it is, is they grew up tomboys. Is that true in your case? Well, yeah. I mean, I told you earlier, I have a twin brother. So um, he played football. He was running back. He played baseball. He played soccer. So I was right in there with him. I wanted to play football. And my mom was like, girls don't play football. What are you doing? <laughs> She's like, you can be a cheerleader. So I did that. But that was the second best. I wanted to play football. I was out there in the dirt playing wiffle ball, everything. So I, I grew up a tomboy. And... Um, my brother got into wrestling with his friends, so I was always kind of around it. Hey, hey and Diana, can I stop you for a second? I got, I got to do my Oprah yeah. on. I got to do my Oprah on you here a little bit. Okay? <laughs> okay. So you grew up a tomboy with a twin brother, Dominic. That makes all the sense in the world. Yeah. But then, Diana, I got, I got to ask you this. You know, there comes a time in a girl's life. I would probably think it's 14, 15, 16 years old, where now boys, you know, start coming relevant. 
in mm -hmm. a young girl's life. So like, even though they might have grown up with that tomboy edge, you know, usually about 14, 15, 16, they start realizing boys, they start going down that path. What, what, what is it that keeps you down that athletic path? I, really, I don't know. I just always wanted to be an athlete. I'm very competitive, so I, um, I was a competitive cheerleader. I was a competitive gymnast. Um, I ran track in high school. I did, like, stats for the baseball team. I always just wanted to be involved in competition. Um, and, you know, I had a boyfriend for a long time in high school, and he kind of just had to accept it. He, um, except that the gym came first, and I was in my basement working out. Because, again, I always wanted to be a wrestler. So, in my mind, what do wrestlers do? They work out. Their physique is number one. And when it came time to, like, have a boyfriend, and, you know, I got into that whole... Um, high school where it's not girls don't do that and everyone kind of made fun of me for it but I was like hey this is me and if you don't like it that's too bad so I kind of just try to keep that attitude now well well Deanna let's talk about that for a second because and, and I'm really asking you these questions because I'm really fascinated by this I want you to know that now I, I understand you know I can understand girls growing up wrestling fans you know mm -hmm. may, maybe you watch it with your father you watch it with your brother a lot of times you know becoming a wrestling fan is is being is, is getting passed down from generation to generation but Deanna there's very few females that I'm a wrestling fan and it's like okay I want to do this mm -hmm. and and to me like those are really the special females at what point did it come to okay I dig this wrestling but you know what I really think I want to do this now um I was nine and I told my mom um, I had seen what got me hooked was and I could be wrong so don't quote me I saw Chris Jericho get hit by Stone Cold, I want to say, with, like, steel chair. And I was like, oh, my God, Dominic. Like, how could – this is real. Like, why? Why? Why would you let him do that to him? And he was like, shut up. Like, just you're ruining it. Be quiet. And I was just hooked. Like, I was so fascinated. I was obsessed. I had every wrestling action figure, every – everything that I wanted, my parents got me. I was very fortunate. Um – and then I saw Trish Stratus and Victoria and Jazz and, like, really strong but powerful women. And I was like, if girls could do this, I could do that. I, I could do that. Um, and I was 15, and there was a school, um, Camp IWF, and they would allow 16-year-olds with parent consent to train. And I was like, Mom, when I'm 16, like, I can do this. I want to be a diva. I want to be a wrestler. And she was like, okay, like, just wait, wait, wait. And she kind of blew me off. And then once I turned 18, I was like, I'm 18 now. I can do what I want. I'm signing up for wrestling school. And that's what I did. So, man, that, that's fascinating to me, uh, uh, you know, Deanna, that, that you never lost it. Because you would think at 18, you know, you got the serious boyfriend now. You got to start thinking about college. I mean, this is what every 18, 18-year-old 18 kid goes through. Yeah. You, think now now you would start you know becoming normal you know it's like you know kind of Deanna I'll be honest with you like listen I wanted to be a baseball player when I yeah. grew up but there comes a time when hey you know what the baseball thing ain't gonna happen I'm mm -hmm. gonna get on the regular path now but you you really believed in yourself that this thing could happen yeah I've always kind of had that mindset like if I believed I could do it enough, it would happen one day. So I just always, like, kept up with wrestling. I always watched. I made sure I was home Monday at 9 o'clock to watch Monday Night Raw. I didn't go out on the weekends because I wanted to watch Friday Night SmackDown at the time. Um, even when it was Thursday Night SmackDown 15 years ago, I was watching it. Um, I just always knew that if I kept it in my heart that I could do it, one day I would be able to. And um, that's why, for me, like, it's amazing that I am doing it because it's what I've always wanted. So my dream really has come true, even at just this indie level. Well, Deanna, let me ask you this. I got to ask you this because I'm a father of three. <laughs> I have a daughter your age. That, yeah. That's the fact. What's your father saying about this? <laughs> he hated it. 
he was like, you're going to look like a whore in those little shorts. What are you doing? And I was like, well, I don't have to wear things like that, Dad. Like, I don't need to be in a thong on TV. I don't want to do that. And he was like, whatever, like, we'll see. And now he doesn't like to come to shows because he, he doesn't believe that I'm not really getting hurt. He's like, how do I know? How do I know that they're not really hitting you? And I'm like, I, I promise. <laughs> it's, it's not real. And so he supports everything I've done. He thinks it's so cool. He brags to, like, all his friends at work, like, look at my daughter. Look at her. Look at her. So now he's so supportive. But when I first started, he was like, you're going to get hurt. You're going to kill yourself. You have enough injuries as it is from when you were growing up. Like, this is dumb. And I was like, well, you know, whatever. Had to defy them at some point. Okay, so, so, so Deanna, you graduate high school. So yeah. now what's the first step you take? And the reason I'm asking you this is not only because I'm interested, but listen, hopefully there's a lot of girls in your position uh, you know, out there, I think the more women in wrestling, the better. Hope, mm -hmm. you know, there's probably a lot of girls out there now, you know, just graduating high school that are where you were. What's mm -hmm. the next step? Now, I want to pursue this wrestling thing. What's the next step? So, like I said, I was online when I was nine, like researching where I could go to school to learn wrestling, um, how old I had to be. Like, I had options that I was weighing. So, once I graduated high school, um, I started college first, and I found in December of 2012 on the internet. Um, I had drove past. The Hold school on, that I Dion, I, I got to stop you again because I yeah. think I think what you said was very important, and I want to make sure people get this. Okay. Very important. You had this desire to become a wrestler. This is your dream. You're gonna pursue it. However, you start college first. Yeah. Now, a lot of people, Deanna, would not do that. It's all the eggs in one basket, you know, or bust. At that age, where did you find the maturity to make that decision, which is a very mature decision to make at that age? I kind of, I love to learn. I'm, it's weird to say, but I am such a nerd. Like, I love to read books. I love history. I love to just Google things and find out like stuff that I don't know. I want to know everything. So ever since I was little again, like it was like, I'm going to go to college and I want to learn exercise science. I'm good at relating things to the body. Like I think I would be good at that. So since I was little again, I just kind of had a vision like this is the path I'm going to take. So when I applied for college, um, it was like, it kind of, if I could have wrestled earlier, I totally would have. But it just kind of fell that way that I started college before I found out about the school that I train out now. So that's why I started college first. Because, again, if I was 16 and my mom would have signed the consent form, I would have been wrestling then. Okay, so so you start to – and listen, Deanna, i got to be honest with you. Exercise, science, I don't even know what that means, <laughs> let alone you getting a degree in this stuff. I don't even I, – I wouldn't even know where to begin. Okay, so how do we start now the formal wrestling training? So I was driving to school one day, and um, I saw, like, a big sign, and it said, Live Pro Wrestling, Friday, first Friday of every month, and a phone number. So I, like, typed it into my phone as I'm driving, and then when I got home that night, I Googled it, and it came up um, – because I wanted to go as, like, a spectator. I was like, what's indie wrestling? I don't know what that is. I only know WWE, what's on TV. Um, TNA, that's all I watched. So I was like, cool, I'm going to go check out a show. Uh, and then I saw that they had a school. And I was like, this is it. I'm going to do this. So I contacted um, the owner of our school, Jersey Devil. And I just kind of sent him, like, a professional email. Like, um, my height, my weight, I didn't really know, like, what a bio was. Um, so I sent him a little quick thing, and I said, I'm interested in becoming a professional wrestler. Here's my phone number. If there's a time we could, you know, set up to meet each other and fill out whatever paperwork it is, please get back to me as soon as possible. Um, so they have – we train Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday. So he was like, pick one of those days. These are the times that we're there. Just come in, and we'll, you know, have a meeting. Um, so I went December 27th, 2012, to my first – wrestling training <laughs> now now you are you know i i can't tell you know uh, uh diana i tried to watch a lot of your work 
uh, on, oh, on, on YouTube. Yeah, no, I, I saw you and Shelly Martinez, and what? then I saw you with Brooke, uh, you know, on TNA. I tried to watch some stuff today. But you you, you would consider yourself, you know, are, are you are you normal size, or are you maybe even a little shorter? Oh, I'm five foot one. Uh, that's what I, I listen. I didn't want to say <laughs> that. So I, I was going to let you say that. Okay. And yeah. that, and that five foot one does not hold you back whatsoever. Yeah. I mean, again, I have been an athlete my whole life. So I just try to, and I train with all guys. So, um, the way that I train is we're the same size. So the guys hit me like I'm one of the guys. So when I get in the ring with a girl, it's weird for me because I have to hold back a little bit and I can't be as aggressive because they're a girl. So I right, think wait, 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 let me let me stop you there yeah. again. Listen, you, I, I'm listen, Deanna, I'm like Oprah. So like you say something and then I gotta make a left and I gotta make a right. No, and, okay. the, now now Deanna, I'm assuming you're a very attractive girl. I mean, every everybody watching this <laughs> can see that. And listen, Deanna, I'm not like the creepy guy. I, I'm I've been married for 31 years, just so you know. I'm no threat. Okay. But when a girl's, you know, beautiful, I like to tell her that they're beautiful. Thank you. But Deanna, I so I would have to think, like I'm thinking now, I'm I'm assuming you you know, be when you start the training, I'm assuming you're in some kind of relationship, right? Um, when I started training, no, I wasn't. Okay, since you started training, ha have you been in a relationship? Um, actually, Damien Adams is my trainer, but he's also my boyfriend. <laughs> oh, see now, now that 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 makes a different story because yeah. I would assume a regular guy is going to think you're absolutely out of your mind and yeah. may even be a little intimidated by this whole wrestling thing. But your boyfriend is in the business, so you yeah. have something in common. Yeah, because I always say like. You know, God forbid he and I ever broke up. How could I date like a normal guy? They would not get it. And they're going to be like, why are you in locker rooms around all these guys? You're in these short shorts and a bra. Like, what are you doing? Who wants a girlfriend like that? So I'm fortunate enough to have a boyfriend who understands because I don't think a normal guy would. See, but this is interesting to me too now. Uh, this is interesting to me too now. Uh, uh, you know, Deanna, to be honest with you, be, how, like you're in the ring bumping and, you know, you just said you're in there bumping with the guys. You're five foot one. I understand you want to do this as a career and Damien is your trainer. Mm -hmm. But is, is, it, is it difficult for a boyfriend in the business to see his girlfriend being bumped around? To, to me, that's that's got to be like so odd, especially – Damien being in the business, like, you know, he's got to know firsthand how injuries come hand in hand with wrestling. No, no matter what. I mean, you yeah. can't prevent injuries. Doesn't that kind of have a have a bearing on his relationship with you? I mean, in other words, is, is he always worried about you in the ring? Um, I think because he's been doing it for so long, he's been training for 15 years now. So he kind of has trained a lot of girls, and it's not new to him. But he always says to me, like, he doesn't like women in wrestling because it's such an aggressive sport, and we can get hurt so easy. So he's, like, overprotective where he makes sure, like, if a situation goes awry or someone really hits me, like, on purpose or something, he knows – he tries to teach me how to handle myself more. So – I think he's a little bit overprotective, but at the same time, like, again, he treats me like one of the guys. And as my trainer, he treats me ten times harder than he treats any of the guys. I get the wrath of him ten times more for stupid mistakes that I make, for how I word something. You know what I mean? Just, he's harder on me because he is my boyfriend. So, as much as people are like, maybe he pulls back a little bit, is he scared? Like, he has no restraints he just gives it to me like he gives it to any of the other guys but harder because now he has a reputation now it's like well that's your girlfriend you're gonna go easy on her or she's gonna get all the opportunities so we have to prove people wrong in that just because we're dating I don't get everything handed to me yeah. okay. um, so maybe a little bit at first he was like oh shit now this is my girlfriend but now he's like I don't care I have to treat you harder to, to keep my respect I, I understand, understand. But now, Deanna, okay, let, let, let's get back to you. Start training. You know, uh, they, they train Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Sundays, I think you said. Now you actually start bumping. 
Now, now your five foot one frame is mm-hmm. physically going through this training. Is there any doubt in your mind? Is there any point of, oh my God, this is a lot different than I thought? Or are you even more obsessed with the wrestling business once you start taking bumps on a mat? My first day of training, um, Sean Bennett was there, and he's now a ref um, down in NXT. He helped train me for a few months before he got called down, but he taught me how to bump the first day. And I was like, okay, this is cool. Like, this doesn't hurt too bad. And then 200 bumps later, I go home, take a shower, and go to sleep. I can't move the next day. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, this is wrestling? Uh -uh. This is what I wanted to do? And then I was like, all right, you know what, like, give, give myself a pat on the back. Like, you got through day one. Let's see how day two is. So in the beginning, it was kind of like I was in pain. I was never used to, like, using all of those muscles at once. It's something you can never replicate in any kind of exercise or activity. So I just kind of took it day by day. But once, like, I woke up and I was like, oh, crap, like, this hurts. It was more addicting. It's kind of like, you know how people say tattoos, like the pain, it's like an addicting pain. Like, that's how I feel when I don't get in the ring for like a couple days. I'm like, I need to get in there because my body hurts now that I'm not doing it. What, what was there like, though, Deanna, was there a first real injury? Like, what was the first real injury where you're like, holy crap, I'm, I'm only 20 years old and, you know... I, <laughs> explain bring me through that process because i would have to think you know and i don't i don't mean to sound sexist you know uh diana but you know males and females are different i would have to think that first injury in wrestling could really scare the crap out of you my first injury i mean it wasn't really like an injury but damien um we were doing like a drill where we had to read each other's bodies. So it was like, he's going to throw a line, and I would have to duck, or he's going to do an up and over, or whatever it was, a leapfrog, he's going to drop down, like, but he's not saying anything, so I just have to watch him and do it. And I thought he was going to throw a line, but he went up for a leapfrog, and his knee just wailed me in the eye. And, like, I was black and blue, my nose was swollen, and I was like, I didn't want to cry because I'm the only girl, but I was like, oh, like, this, that hurt. Um... But, again, like, as an athlete, I was a gymnast. So how many times did I go up in the air to do a standing tuck and fall right on my face? Deanna, you are a gymnast, but how many knees are you taking <laughs> to the eye, you know, going over the horse? You know what I mean? You, you would be surprised, like, if, in cheerleading, how many times, like, you, if you hold the girl up and she, you know, falls down, like, you're getting hit with t- toes and elbows and wrists and clonked in the head. So... Now, now, let me ask you this, Deanna. What about when you have this black eye? Yeah. What about when you go home to the father? Luckily, my dad kind of like, um, my parents are divorced, so my dad didn't see it. But when I told him, he's like, I told you. I told you this was going to happen. You need to listen. You need to stop. And I was like, no, like, it's okay. I've had black eyes before, dad. What's the difference? And my mom was like, did he hit you on purpose? Like, and I'm like, no, it was my fault. It was my fault. You should have, did you tell your mom that that he was trying to send the message? And there was one time I did get hurt by um. There was another girl training with us, and she had been in the business for a long time, and we were she, we were like doing a match on the fly, and she just came and like snapmared me and just wailed me like like a forearm to the chest, but from behind. And she got me right across the jaw on purpose. And I couldn't eat for like days. I had to go to the hospital, get my jaw reset. And that's when I was like, I need to learn how to defend myself if this ever happens again. My mom was like, I'm going to kill her. I'm going to go find her. This, You know, so. Hey, you um, know, De- Deanna, you That bring- was like a real injury on purpose. Well, you, you bring up a very interesting point, and I'm glad you brought that up. You know, I, I, I've seen a lot of indie shows, you know, I mean, you know, in my time, I just did some indie work in England and, and Germany and, you know, the, and, you know, there's usually like the one girl, you know, there's usually like that one female student that stands out. Yeah. Deanna, how does that work when, 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 you know, you're the one girl 
at that school training with all the guys. And now all of a sudden the second girl comes in. How does that work from a female point of view? Is your instinct to protect your territory? And uh-huh. you know, that, that that's the wrestling instinct too. You know, yeah. Deanna, let, let, let's call a spade a spade. Guys, you know, it's all about protecting your spot. You know, that's wrestling. But is that your instinct to kind of like, you know, protect your territory? Or do you welcome the new girl with open arms? I think at first, like, a woman's instinct is to protect themselves and to protect, like, hey, these are my guys. Don't bother them. But one for me, like, I get that naturally. But then I kind of, and I've always been like this, where I treat people how I want to be treated. And would I want someone to hit me for real, for no reason? Absolutely not. So I, I would never do that to anyone else. And then, again, too, like, when you're new at something, you don't want to be, like, the new kid, the one that's, like, disowned, that sits in the corner by themselves. Like, I was new at school, and I hated it. So why would I ever want to make someone else feel like that? And I guess maybe that's, like, the tomboy in me where, I, I don't know. Like, I've just never really been too, like, this is mine. This is mine, and you're invading. Where I'm just kind of like, cool, you want to wrestle? All right, like, let me show you. I can help you. You can help me. Um... I, there's been girls that come in and out, and I, I'm the same with everyone. Like, I'm gonna welcome them with open arms because that's how I would want to be treated. Do you do you feel now? Now you you know you went to TNA for the one night only. You've been around enough WWE locker rooms now. You know, making a you know doing extra work. Do mm-hmm. you feel that same vibe there with the girls, or is a, was it a little different on that level, especially with TNA because you you worked a match, you know, yeah. being the being the new girl, or or was it a female thing? And whether it was Indies or TNA, you kind of felt the same vibe. Um, for TNA, I was kind of lucky because Rob is my trainer, so at the time he was dating Brooke. So I had met Brooke prior. So it wasn't like the new girl coming in because I had I had known faces. I had done a, um, a seminar a few weeks prior with Pat Kenny. So another New lucky. Jersey Irish yeah. Pat, New Jersey boy. Okay, one of my good friends, Irish Pat. Okay, go ahead. Um, so I was lucky to know some faces, so I wasn't completely in the dark. But and everyone at TNA was welcomed me. Um, You know, I introduced myself to everyone, you know, that whole, like, uh, respect thing, shake everyone's hand, you know. So I did that, and everyone was nice, and if they didn't like me, like, I didn't get that vibe at all. Um, But then when you go to WWE, it's kind of like, I felt like everything is more busy there. Like, there's a million people doing a million different things. You don't know what anyone's doing. So as an extra, like, no one really cares. Um, You're just kind of there to, like, do whatever and hang out. And then when they need you, they need you. And then you're there to do whatever. So a lot of the divas don't even, like, come up and talk to you, where at TNA, Gail Kim is like, so who's on the indies? Like, would I know anyone? I need to start doing that. Like, and wanted to get to know me a little bit, where at WWE, I feel like maybe it's just too busy. It's too crazy. Everyone has a million things to do. Um, But then again, as a female, I would know if I was in that situation, there can only be so many female on a card. Yeah. There can only be one female match you know, on an indie show. So for other girls to come in and possibly take your spot, I get that sense of, like, that anxiety and that animosity because I, I wouldn't want my spot taken, yeah. you know? So Now, now, now Deanna, let me ask you this. And let's, let's, let's make believe, like, you know, it's just you and I talking now. Nobody else is watching this interview. It's, okay. just, it's just the two of us, you know? So the first time this Robbie E uh, comes into your <laughs> life, and pro- probably wearing the ridiculous uh, polka dot trunks, like yeah. he like he was wearing uh, the same the first time I met him. With these, yeah. these ridiculous <laughs> polka dot trunks. Like, uh, is there a point where you say to yourself, "Oh man, this this guy, well, you know, what a real jackass." I mean, is is there like a point when you say that to yourself about Robbie? Some stories that people tell me, and I'm like. It makes sense because his character, like Robbie E that you see on TV is Rob Strauss in real life. So it, it people's stories, I'm like, yeah, I could see that happening. Like, that's just who he is. So when I had, I don't even remember the first time I met him. I think it was at training. I was nervous because I'm like, this is a TNA superstar. They're coming to train with me. Like, 
oh my gosh, I need to be in tip-top shape, I need to be perfect, my match needs to be amazing. And then just this laid-back guy comes in and he's like, hey, what's up? Like, you know, wants to roll around in the ring with me. I'm like, okay, cool, like, I don't have anything to be scared about. So my personal, like, he's never been Robbie E to me. He's always Rob Strauss. I got to tell you a story because I can't wait to get him on this show again. Because mm -hmm. he was on the show, and I'm ripping him apart. Because little did he know, I, I, I had him on the show. Little did he know I was going to bring Brooke on the show after him. So he came on the show, and I asked Robbie. I said, you know, Robbie, how, do you, how did you get a girl like Brooke? I, I mean, let, let, let's call a spade a spade. So he tells me about this very romantic walk that the two of them went on. And it was raining, and there was a big puddle. And rather than let her walk across the puddle, he tells me this romantic story about the way he scooped her up, and her <laughs> eyes met his eyes, and then he, he, he laid one on her, right? That's the story Robbie E. tells me. So mm -hmm. then I ask, I, I ask Brooke, Brooke, listen, Robbie E. told me this story about the first romantic encounter. And I laid it all out for, for Brooke. And Brooke said, yeah, Robbie only forgot to tell you one thing. And I said, what was that, Brooke? And she said, Robbie forgot to tell you. After he laid one on me, I slapped him right across his face. <laughs> you know, a, a, li a little detail that my good friend Robbie E. forgot to tell me. Now, now Deanna, let me ask you this. Because, again, I'm, I'm just going by, by the information I'm picking up on you. You just really had your first match just about a year ago, right? Yeah. Um, I, I'm trying to think. December 2013. Okay, so about so a year, a about a year, a year and a half ago. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and what was that like? Again, it was with um, the girl who had been training at my school for a while. Um, so lucky enough, we got to put some things together. So I wasn't as nervous, but um, oh, I was, like, shaking. I was crying. Like, I was like, I can't do this. Like, I'm not made for this. I can't entertain people. And they were, like, everyone in the back was like, shut up. Like, you could do this. Like, what, it, once you go through the curtain, it's completely different. Um, so once I got in the ring, and I'm still kind of like this, like, I get butterflies in the back, and I do, like, a whole spiel. But then once I get in the ring, it's, like, my calm place. Like, once I'm in the ring, everything else goes blank, and I know what I have to do. So for my first match, I kind of got a taste of that, where once I got in the ring, I was calm. And I was like, okay, I can do this now. But prior, I was freaking out. I was a nervous wreck. I think I cried for like three days prior because I was so nervous. You know, I, I got to ask you this because I was a little confused about this, Deanna, and maybe you can explain it to me. I saw that first, uh, you know, one night only match with Brooke, right? Mm -hmm. And your entrance was like very, very awkward. Like, yeah. and, and Taz was trying to sell it as like, oh, she's a very shy girl. And this is <laughs> and he gave the shy little wave. So like in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, like, is the gimmick supposed to be she's this shy girl going out to the ring and this and that. And then once the match begins, you know, the New Jersey chick comes out. Like I was really trying to understand the gimmick. Okay. What, what ex yeah, explain that to me. What was I supposed to be saying? Well, at the t like, I mean, I am kind of shy. Like, um, I'm just more quiet. I probably don't seem that way now. But back then, like, I was new. That was my eighth match in front of a crowd. So I didn't really, like, know where to go in terms of character. And then I'm around women like Mia Yim, who is known for her wrestling, and Havoc, who has this awesome, like, badass, woman killer character and then there's like little me like this is my eighth match I'm just happy to be here um by luck so when I talked to Christy Hemming she's like well you're shy so just be awkward and be shy and play that up times 10 so I was like all right if that's what you want from me that's what I'll do so she was like you just have to be like you know and weird facials and just nervous so that was my best wow. in trying to be a nervous <laughs> wreck <sighs> All right, listen, listen, take, listen, Deanna, listen to me, all right? Yes. Me and you now, 20, 23, 24 years experience, right? You're the Jersey girl. Yeah. You know, you're the Jersey girl. A Jersey girl is always going to have the reputation. The, mm -hmm. the audience is going to expect 
a Jersey girl to be a certain way because, you know, listen, we stereotype everybody. You know, you, you know, you know us from the East, you know, how we look at people from the South. Yeah. Everybody stereotypes everybody else. And in everybody's mind watching television, and, and that's all that matters, in everybody's mind, girls from New York, girls from New Jersey, they are biatches in everybody's mind. And, of course, Jersey Shore <laughs> greatly helped yeah. that cause. So it's, it's almost like that's what people are going to expect you to be. And, listen, I found out, you know, when, when I was an on-screen character at WCW, I found out people hate people from the East Coast. They yeah. hate New York. <laughs> they, 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 they really do. I mean, you know, you, you talk about racism. There should be like, uh, you know, p parts of the country-ism because yeah. people hate New Yorkers. <laughs> so you, you got to keep in mind just the fact that you're from Jersey, it gives mm -hmm. you natural heat. So like at, at that point, you got to give the people what they want and give them who they want you to be. Everybody hates a New Yorker, a New Jersey girl. They want to boo you, and that makes it so much easier because, you know what? If they want to boo me, I'm going to give them reason to boo me. Because, like, when you came down there with just the fact, to me watching for the first time, the fact that Taz is selling, selling, selling Jersey, 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 yeah. and you're coming, I'm saying, no, 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 no. Yeah, I'm, you know, you know, Christy Hemme gave her notice today to TNA. Did you know that? Oh no, I did know that. Yeah, supposedly no. she got some great job. I don't, I don't know where. I mean, I hope to find out. You know, and good for her. But yeah. Uh, yeah, she gave her notice to TNA. But um, yeah. Does that make sense to you? What I just told you? Well, now knowing better, um, a little bit better, totally. But at the time, like Rob had done the Jersey Shore thing, and he had um. Becky Bayless, yeah, is that Becky her name? Bayless, Cookie? Yeah, yeah, Cookie, With yeah. Him. And um, I was just kind of like, I feel like the Jersey thing is overplayed. I feel like it's stereotyped to be Jersey Shore, and I don't want to do that. Um, and Rob and Damien were like, you are 100% Italian. You look it. Mm -hmm. I look at you, and that's what I see. Yeah. That is your, that's your go-to. You have to do that. And I was like, no, I don't want to. Like, It's just I don't want to be – generalized as like oh she's yeah, but, you, but you, you know what you got to do diana to be honest with you here's what you got to do and they're right what robbie's telling you what damie's telling you what you got to do is you got to take your personality and who you are and you got to magnify it a million times over because mm -hmm. you if you do that diana you don't have to act and mm -hmm. that's where a, a lot of wrestlers fall short. They try to take on their gimmick that isn't an extension of themselves. They go out there and act really yeah. bad, and nobody buys into it. But you see me talking to you right now, right? This is what I love about you, and this is where you got to look into your own soul. I mm -hmm. see the Jersey girl. I, you, 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 you're Italian, you're dark, the whole nine yards, but I don't see the, I don't see the Jersey Shore. I see this girl who is an athlete, who is confident, who wants to get in that ring and can beat anybody up. Like yeah. to me, to me, the, the dirt Jersey girls are getting the hair done and like what Becky was. Becky was a Jersey girl. I see you as being a Jersey girl, but really being a tough athlete that, listen, I'll get in the ring with anybody. I can kick anybody's backside. I, that's different from the stereotypical Jersey Shore. Would you agree with that? Yeah, I would. And now, not that I'm experienced by any means, but having a little bit more in-ring experience and kind of knowing, being more confident in who I am and being more in touch like with myself, and that's what I do. My, my gimmick now is that I'm 100% Italian. My gear is... The, the Ferrari yellow with the Ferrari symbol that has like a little chick in it and my initials and, you know, the red, white, and green. So now I'm embracing that. Um, and, but at the time, I was like, I feel like it's overplayed. everywhere Every indie company had that one Jersey Shore Italian Guido. And now I see it more as an extension of myself. It doesn't have to be a gimmick. I can be myself and just amplify it times 10. And, and that's more of who I am now as a wrestler. 
But that's who I am in real life anyway. Well, that's the whole thing. You got to understand, uh, you know, Deanna, there may be a lot of girls, especially on the Jersey scene, you know, playing that up independently on the East Coast. But you're the real deal. You, you, you see what I'm saying? So, like, yeah. screw what everybody else is doing. I mean, you're the real deal. You're going to be better than everybody else because, I mean, that that's who you are. Yeah. And now I'm, I'm fortunate enough to do that and realize that. Um, and I wish I would have done it a little earlier, but it's a learning process, and you learn every day. So... And that, Damien and Rob kind of said that too, like, hey, I told you, you know, you, now it's, we well, have to learn Italian. And I'm like, okay. And even the few times that I was at WWE, people, producers and agents, they're like, clearly you're Italian, do you know it? And I'm like, eh, I can tell you off. <laughs> and they're like, okay, well, we'll learn it. So I'm taking classes um, right. at school and everything. So I, I'm trying to embrace it more now. But at the time when I did the pay-per-view, I was just kind of like a lost puppy. Yeah, I didn't know no, who I wanted why, to be. That, that, that's why I wanted to ask you. So, 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 Deanna, how how often are you working now? And is the majority of the work on the East Coast? Um. Yeah, I work mostly at, like every Friday and Saturday, every weekend. I, I try to take as many you know shows as possible. Um, Mostly on the East Coast, like Massachusetts to like Maryland, Delaware. But I've also been fortunate enough to go to like the mid uh, the Midwest. Um, so I was just at OVW, and I did their TV a few times now. So um, I'm steadily making my way more West Coast. Hey, you know, Deanna, let, let me ask you this. Um, a couple things. Let me ask you about wrestling first, okay? Okay. Deanna, this is one thing that always bothers me, man. And and like I I know like there's nothing to it, but it really bothers me. And I want to get from a female perspective, especially mm -hmm. on the indie scene, how you feel about this, right? Okay. I was just working over in Germany, and I was just working over in Europe, and they only have a few girls over there. It blew my mind. Like, there's really only a handful of girls over there. I was really surprised to see this. But one thing I saw that really, really bothered me was, like, you know, in Germany, in England, the girls were, like, basically more or less, like, dressing with the guys, and, like, it was no big deal because they were all wrestlers. Like, mm -hmm. and the, it was no big deal to the guys. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But me, like, as an outsider on the outside looking in, it really, really bothered me. You must run into those type of situations, you know, on the indie scene where, you know, the locker rooms, there's not a lot of privacy and guys mm -hmm. are coming in and out. I mean, you know, how, do, how, do, how does a female handle that? Um, even like at the school that I train at, we um, do a show every month. So it's called D2W Pro Wrestling. And we do like a local show in Jersey at the same VFW every month. So even when I started my, when my first match was a little over, you know, a year ago, I had to get changed in the bathroom and I didn't get it at first because I was like, well, I'm one of, I'm a wrestler. Like I'm one of the guys, like, why can't, you know, I just go in the back room and put my stuff down. And they're like, no, it doesn't work like that. You know, <laughs> like women are judged the minute you say you're a wrestler. So you're only adding to that stereotype if you get changed or you put your bag in a certain place. Um, so I've been getting changed in the bathroom at the majority of my shows. I mean, it's just something I've kind of gotten used to because there isn't a lot of women. Um, so I did do one, like, all women show. It's called Valkyrie. Um, they do, like, Jersey and uh, New York. Um, Brooklyn. So it was weird to be in an all women's locker room and just be able to like be free and walk around and do whatever I wanted because women aren't used to that. But I think also like in terms of wrestling, I don't dig like the intergender because there's so many women talent. Why book a guy versus a girl? Make it more believable. And then there's women who take these crazy moves by all these guys and are killing themselves or they're bleeding. Or, but why? Why? There's well, so many women all over the place. Well, you know what, though? I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. First of all, like, you know, on, on an, I've seen some of that on an indie scene, and mm -hmm. it, it, it's frightening. It's yeah. frightening. But on the other hand, I've seen it on a professional's uh, level, like Lucha Underground mm -hmm. with, with that sexy star. 
Yeah, they, yeah, they, I've seen it. yeah. They make the girls look incredible. But mm -hmm. I've seen it on the indie scene where, like, I literally wanted to smack that guy right in the mouth for yeah. the way he was treating the girl, you know? So I think it can be done correctly, but you really have to have professionals doing that. Yeah, I think, again, like you said, I, I think that if it's the right people and it's the right story, like, absolutely. Um, a couple weekends ago, Damien just gave me, like, a power slam, but it's built up. It's not, okay, we're going to wrestle, and you're going to super kick me with thumbtacks, and you're going to do, like, I just think, Number one, that's not how I'm trained, so I would never do that to begin with. <laughs> and I think it's crazy that people put their bodies, like, on the line that much. But at the same time, like, I just feel there's so many women who could use the extra booking. I myself would take – I take as many bookings as possible. So why book a really good girl and then have her wrestle, like, some loser guy? There was a time – a couple months ago, someone was like, would you want to come out and do a few shows in California? So I was like, absolutely. Like, just email me a bunch of the information, and I'll talk it over with my trainer, and we'll try to make something work. And then in the email, it's like, well, you're going to come to California and wrestle five guys. That's not worth it. Yeah. I, I, I can do that at my school. I want a, the experience with a girl. I want to get in the ring and be able to be with as many different women and experience as many different scenarios as possible. It's it's different with a guy because I can do so many I can do my high flying moves. But with a girl, I can't pick them up for head scissors because I'm five foot one. Right, right, right. So well, it's it's completely different when you put a guy versus a girl or a guy, you know, and a girl in a tag match or an inter you know what I mean? It's yeah. I, for me at least, how I'm trained, it's I don't like it. Please tell me on the indie level. This is very, very important to me, and I don't think you do. You, you I, obviously, Deanna, you're very intelligent. With I could just tell Mania for the first time, college and the background and everything. But please tell me, like on the indie level, you never, ever, ever do anything you're uncomfortable doing, do you? No, absolutely not. Now, but when I when I first started, I was. And not that I'm not generous now, but I was more like, oh, my God, I can't tell them no. I'll just do it. And my trainer was like, why? And Rob, too. Rob was like, why are you going to do that if you're not comfortable? Or why are you going to potentially screw up the match by being scared of something? There's other ways and other moves and other psychology that you can do to get the same result without doing something you're both uncomfortable with. Yeah. So I've been really fortunate enough to have trainers that know psychology and know like chain wrestling and matter. You know what I mean? Where I don't rely so much on big crazy moves. Yeah. Don't Deanna, please don't ever put yourself in that situation. I'm very, um, you know, I mean, I worked a very long time with Daphne. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I was there when, you know, she was in a match with like Mick Foley and Abyss and Raven. And they wanted her to do all that stuff. And I think Daphne would tell you she's not the same person today because yeah. she wasn't comfortable and she didn't say no. So nothing is ever, ever worth that. I mean, you got to – you have to positively know that. Yeah. And, and now so much like – I'll speak up a little bit more. But I feel like for anyone who just started in, in anything, like you're nervous. You don't want to – upset the wrong people and you don't want to seem like a bully. So I was just like, okay, like, yeah, I guess that's fine. And now I'm like, well, how about we do this instead? Good, good, good. I think I, someone asked me like, Hey, would you take like a, like if you pick me up and I power bomb you and I'm like, well, we don't need that. Then yeah, they don't care. Right. We can just do like, give me an elbow and cut me off. We don't need crazy moves because, and again, the way Damien and Rob have trained me, like you can get a reaction so many different ways than killing yourself. Right. Oh, yeah, Rob, Rob's a master at that. I mean, there's no, no, there's no doubt about that. Now, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this, Deanna, because I'm a little concerned about this. Okay. What, what if tomorrow the big offer comes along? You know, okay. for argument's sake, you know, hopefully uh, you know, hopefully everything's over okay over there at TNA. I mean, who knows with everything you hear. But mm -hmm. whether it's TNA or WWE, say all of a sudden that big offer comes along, Right. Okay. What, what happens to the college career? Um, people ask me this a lot, and my I always say like, well, college could be done anywhere. I can take classes online. I can 
go to a community college. If if I, I had to move and do NXT in Florida, I could do that. Or if it's TNA and I could be home, my schedule stays the same. So, and if there was an offer to train in Japan or go to Mexico for a few, whatever it is, like, college can be done anywhere. As long as I have a laptop and a pen, I can do the work. And I'm willing to do the work. Um, I've always, and, and my trainers do this too, like, you need a backup plan. Because if that one thing you do does really hurt you, then this is over. But your life isn't over. Right. So you need something else. So that's why, like, I, I try, I'm a full-time student. I take 12 credits every semester. I take four classes every single time. I'm taking a summer class now. It's five weeks, four days a week. So um, I think college is more important than anything because, God forbid, wrestling doesn't work out how I want it to, then what am I going to do? And not only that, and listen, you know, this is the truth, and I don't agree with this. You know, Dion, I never agree with this, but this is the truth, okay? Mm -hmm. When it comes to women, wrestle, wrestling is sexist. And mm -hmm. the women are going to have a much shorter shelf life than a man. Let, yes. Let's face it. A man can wrestle till he's 40, 42, no problem. When, when women in the business turn 30, they're already looking to that younger 22, 23-year-old. Yeah, th that's a fact. That that's not Vince Russo saying that. So that's why I think you know it is so vital for women. Don't put. I worry so much, Diana, about these girls on this um on this diva show. Y you know why? Because they're in their early twenties, and mm -hmm. I'm I'm going to tell you something. Right now, they're sitting on top of the world, and it's not going to get any better than that. Yeah. And all of a sudden, they're going to turn around 28, 30 years old, and all this is going to be gone. And mm -hmm. let's face it, you know, Deanna, at that age, they're probably too old to model. A, a yeah. lot of times, the WWE isn't going to let them keep their name. That's going to hinder them. You, you yeah. know what I'm saying? So that's why it is so vital to have that career to fall back on, do the thing you love, follow your dream, but you got to be smart enough to know, you know what, this isn't going to last forever. Yeah, and I, too, even with my parents, like, if I if I start slacking with school, it's like, reality check, school's first. Mm -hmm. um, they're on top of me with, like, you did your homework, you, you got all this taken care of, your financial aid, whatever. Whatever it is, like, they make sure school is number one. Um and, I, you know, it's funny to say, but I get punished if school isn't number one because my parents are paying for me to go to school. Like, they pay a lot of money for me to go to school. It needs to be number one because in the grand scheme of my life, like, again, how long can I wrestle? I can't be doing it at 40 and 50. And what if I want to have kids? Then that ends. Or what if I get married? Like, there's so many different uh, things that I can do because I'm so young. So I have to just keep it all in mind. And it's hard, but... It's what I want to do. I've always wanted to wrestle, and I wanted to get a college degree. So I put in the work. It's crazy, but it's what I wanted to do, and I love it. So uh, it's worth the time. You're living the dream. You're exactly. living the dream. I, I really, really am. You're living the dream. Well, Deanna, listen, i got to tell you this. Honestly, for a toilet, like I said to you, i got kids 28, 25, and my daughter's going to be 20. So I know mm -hmm. the age group, you know. Yeah. For somebody your age and where you are in life right now, i got to tell you, I'm very impressed. Thank you. you got it all together. You, I love you chasing the dream, which I believe everybody should. But in the meantime, you got the plan B, so you got something to fall back on. You know, later on down the road, and 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 I'm very very impressed uh, with you through this interview. And I got to tell you, I see nothing but great things ahead of you for uh, your future in wrestling as a uh, physical. What is it? A physical scientist. Um, an exercise scientist. Wh which I have no <laughs> idea what that means, but it sounds very impressive just by Thanks. you saying that. And I really feel at this point in your life, you got so much going for you. You got so many directions to go in. And I really enjoyed this interview because I, I, I love to talk to young athletes that really like, you know, there's a, listen, there's a physical side to this, Diana. You got to be able to compete in this thing. And, you know, your background, everything you told me with the football and the cheerleading and all that, that you, 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 you got it. You're physical. But yeah. then there's the mental 
and you got to have a plan in place. You got to know what you're doing. You got to be able to foresee the future. Not a lot of people your age get that. I'm sure you run into a lot of people who don't. Yeah, even like my friends, the few that I have left, they don't they don't get like the dedication um, that I have to have towards wrestling. And I have very few friends left because they're like, well, it's Friday night. Why can't you come hang out? And I'm like, all right, well, I have a show. I have to. I have a responsibility. I can't go and party and do whatever because something else is more important. And I, I struggle with that a lot, in all honesty, because I'm like, why don't people get it? I, f I don't feel like I'm 20 years old because I, I work a full-time job. I work 40 hours a week at my school, and then I'm going to school full-time, and I wrestle three days a week, and my show's on the weekend. I don't have time to have friends. I feel like an adult. So I struggle with it a lot because it's like I'm not the average 20-year-old. And my friends don't get that. Most people don't get that. But then again, I've always envisioned this is what I want, so I have to just keep that. It's it's like an internal struggle, kind of. Yeah. Oh, absolutely but it is. Yeah, no, no. And, and you know what? I, I got to tell you something, Deanna. It's only going to get worse because no. it's very hard for people outside of the wrestling business to, re to relate to somebody in the wrestling business. It's, it's, yeah, and my it's, trainer always said that from the yeah. beginning. He's like, if you stick with this, you're going to lose friends. Yes. You're only going to be friends with people in wrestling, and then they're not even your real friends. Exactly. But that <laughs> – I, I, I couldn't have said any better than that. Let me ask you this. So this will be the last question. Then I'll let you go because you got school tomorrow. Yes. Uh, <laughs> now, um, have you done many interviews? Um, right after the pay-per-view came out, I did like a few. I called into a few things um, and did a few interviews, but not many. So this is big. The Vince Russo show. This is the biggest one, absolutely. This is, this is huge for you and yeah. your career, right? Huge. Yes. Now, you have to give me my word. Okay, because my assessment of this interview is uh, you're going to be a very big star in the wrestling business. Thank you. Okay? But I'm already concerned that you're going to forget Vince Russo. When, no! when you're the diva, uh, when you're the knockout, and I'm trying to get you back on the show to follow up, I'm going to mm -hmm. have to go through your people. I mean, yes. can I have your word now that that's not going to happen? I promise. Press fingers. Okay, now we now I can't I'm, break it now. Yeah, I've got that on videotape now. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Well, well, Diana and and Perazzo, right? Perazzo. Yes. I want. I love the Italian name. Thank you, uh, Diana. I want to tell you, I'm very impressed. I love Thank where you you're much. going with this thing. Uh, I wish you nothing but the best. You know, Robbie E as a trainer, a little sketchy because <laughs> because of his character, nothing to do with you. But uh, listen, I, I I expect great things from you. Uh, I want to bring you on the show again. I want you to be a friend of the show. And Absolutely. I just, yeah, I want to thank you for joining us here tonight and, and letting us know what's going on with your life. Uh, yeah, thank you so much for having me. Really, I appreciate it. Like you said, like this is, Amazing for me to have the opportunities I've had, and this is just up there with the best of them. So thank you so much. Oh, no problem. And, and Deanna, hang out there because I want to give you a personal goodbye, but I'm going to sign off. But everybody, there you have it. That's the future of professional wrestling. We need more women like Deanna Perazzo who understands, you know, not only wrestling, follow her dreams, what every young person should do. But also knowing, got to have a backup plan. Not things don't always work out the way you want. Let her be a role model to you. Nothing but the best. And we will be back here next week with a new edition on Vixens Who Rule. Thank you very much for joining us. I'll catch you all on the rebound. The preceding presentation was brought to you by The Realm Network.